I'd like to do a brief comparison between Gauss's law and Ampere's law, and we'll consider the spherical charge with constant uniform density throughout for the Gauss's case. And for the Ampere's case, we'll consider a wire that has a uniform current density throughout. Now, each of these will have radius capital R. So let's look at the Gaussian case first. We take the Gaussian surface, which will be a sphere inside the ball, and we have 4 pi r squared, where r is less than the capital R, times the E, and that's going to be here 1 over epsilon sub naught times the density times the volume of the charge inside. And since we're at little r, this will be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, you can express that this way, or you can say, well, in terms of the total charge, well, the total charge would be here, rho would be replaced by capital Q over 4 thirds pi big R cubed. So then the constants here cancel, and you get the ratio of the cubes here, if you want to get it in terms of the capital Q. Each of these has, you know, their merits, and sometimes we'll use the row, sometimes we'll use the Q. Over here with the current case, we have the 2 pi little r times b, and then we're going to eat up here inside some current given by the current density j times the area. Notice current density is based on an area kind of thing because you're cut the wire and look at its aerial the surface there when you cut and currents flowing through there in a uniform way. So pi little r squared times j gives you the total current going through the inside Amperian uh, circle that you, you have drawn. Now if you want the total, complete total current, then you have to replace this j with the capital I divided by pi big R squared things cancel and you get the ratio of the squares. See, when you're looking at something like this, it's uh, kind of easy to put this down because if you want the charge on the inside of a sphere and you know the total charge is Q, you basically are looking at the ratio of the distance to the third power. And here we're looking at the ratio of the distance to the second power since we're looking at a cross-sectional area. So then we come down here to our answer. We divide by 4 pi and the r squared. We have a cancellation. We have it linear in r as we go from the center to the surface. And notice here, we divide by r once again, linear in r. These are very, very neat results. And when you get to the surface, where a little r is big r, then you get the 1 over r squared rule, as you would expect when you're outside the sphere you have an inverse square law. And then here, when you have the little r equal to big R, you get the 1 over r result, which is what you would expect for a line of current.